Put a smile on your face when you're moving from place Good to morning, place. viewers, and welcome back to the Tobago Updates Morning Show. It is 7.20 a.m. And it's uh, Tuesday, the 14th of February, 2023, Valentine's Day. As we head on into this segment, we will be speaking, and we are so happy to have on set with us Dr. Stephen Shepard, uh, CEO of THTI, the Tobago Hospitality and Tourism Institute. Morning, morning to you. Good morning, Julian. All right. And you know this morning, before we even get started and head on into the interview, it's Valentine's Day. Anyone you want to shout out out there? Well, to my wife, Dr. Claudine Shepard, first, and all the ladies in Toronto, Tobago. Happy Valentine's. Excellent, excellent. You know, you give a nice kind of political clearance there. <laughs> Connecting with all. Excellent, excellent indeed. As we get started this morning, we're speaking THDI. Sure. Um, and, you know, we want to start uh, firstly from the perspective. Um, over the, within the last year or more, mm -hmm. uh, THDI has become a, a greater level of focus in terms of hospitality and tourism within Trinidad and Tobago yeah. because of the changes that have happened at a national level. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in a general sense, how has that been going in terms of the growth and development of THDI? Well, it has been going quite good for us. I mean, I know you're referring to the closure of TTHDI and Chagaramas, mm -hmm. which is tragic, but what, what has happened since then? is that THTI has had many more students from Trinidad. In fact, we have more students now from Trinidad than from Tobago, so, which is good because we are serving the national community and we've taken up that responsibility. All right. Yeah. So we, we're going into some of the areas uh, this morning, I mean, for the benefit and information of our viewers. Sure. Let's start off the discussions in terms of looking at accreditation. Sure. Uh, one feels like years ago when you spoke about university and going off, it was just about finding a good program yeah. um, somewhere. Uh, in more recent times, accreditation has become a, a big thing in a number of agencies, even where you seek funding and support to ensure that your program is accredited. Right. Uh, give us a little insight into what exactly is accreditation from the con uh, context of the education institution okay so accreditation is really a process by which a national body in this case in our case the accreditation council of Trinidad and Tobago ensures that ed higher education institutions are quality assured so accreditation is really a quality assurance process to ensure that the organization is run in such a manner that the program the quality of programs delivered meet some international criteria so THTI has been accredited from 2014. We are accredited again in 2019. And between accreditation events, there's what you call a midterm review because they want to ensure that you didn't just get ready for that event, but that you've maintained the standards. So we had our midterm review last year and we are up for reaccreditation again next year. So it's ongoing. So what it does, it ensures that our standards are right up and they are the criteria that ACTT uses there's vision and mission, ensure that your, your vision and mission and your purpose is there. There's governance and administration, that's critical. There's teaching and learning, okay? There's commitment to continuous improvement and um, preparedness for change because you want to ensure in this fast, in this time where things are changing so rapidly, you know, we're going to artificial intelligence now that the organization is prepared to deal with the changes in the environment. So those are the main criteria that ACTT uses to evaluate organizations. All right. Uh, as we speak to accreditation, uh, tell us, this accreditation, it lends broadly for the institution and or the programs that the institution also offers? Both. So the ACTT accredits the institution primarily, but there are some programs, especially life and death programs, that have to be program accredited. So, for example, in UE, all the medical programs have to be accredited, and you can understand why. Yes. There's an organization called CAMHP that does that. Then the engineering programs are accredited, right? So, whether it's electrical, mechanical, civil, and so on, there are global bodies that accredit those programs. But there are other programs like history or Spanish are not necessarily accredited, but they, are, they have to go through UE's internal quality management process. Similarly, at THDI, we have a quality management department, and all the programs are subjected to the internal quality criteria. Yeah? All right. And, and, um, mm -hmm. and what ACTT will use to ensure our programs are sound is that they go through our internal process, our quality management, to our academic committee, then to the board of directors. They will look at the minutes, they'll see what was considered, and then they'll accept it. Within our Tobago space, is THDI the only accredited uh, tertiary level institution in Tobago? It's the only Tobago-owned Tobago, 
Tobago based, it's the only indigenous accredited institutions. You have branches of others operating in Tobago, like Costat and uh, Cipriani Labor College and so on, they're also accredited. But their headquarters is in, in Trinidad. I teach as the only Tobago owned, Tobago based, Tobago grown institution that's accredited. And supported, uh, directly connected and supported by the Tobago House of yes, Assembly. Yes, it is, yeah. All right. And that's, is that part of the broader uh, tourism and hospitality thrust and mandate within the Tobago it context? It is, it is, because THC was primarily established to provide the qualified and experienced um, labor for the tourism and, and the tourism sector. And that we've been in for the last 25 years. All yeah. right, excellent. Uh, one of the other areas we want to head on into, uh, we understand that there is a PATH program, P-A-T-H. Yeah. Uh, give us a little bit more information so on the PATH program. So I think program. that is probably one of the most important things that we do. This is a program called, it's, PATH is an acronym for preparing adults for tertiary, for transition to higher education. Now, we saw for the last couple of years that our CSEC results have not been quite sterling. People may, um, they may pass four or five, but the grades that may be kind of low. In some cases, they may not pass math and English and so on. And therefore, will not qualify to enter the associate degree programs. So we've developed this program that people can get into, and we bring you up to the level equivalent to a good CSEC passes. And then once you've passed that, you are eligible to get into the, um, to the associate degree programs. So, we are widening it. What we are doing right now is seeking to lift its standards so it could stand alone. So you could use our, well, it's not, we haven't worked on it yet, but the plan is you can come do this path program and get into programs outside of THDI. Right? Ah, yeah. so, so, so tell me something. Is, the, is there a particular target age group for this? Or no, it's no age group. Wide? Anyone from literally 16 to 80 or above, if you're so willing. Only thing, they, if you are under 18, we will not allow you to touch alcohol. Because okay. part of that program is introduction to tourism and introduction to culinary and so on. And part of it is alcohol. And by law, if you are under 18, you cannot interfere with alcohol. All right. So the part program, again, is about preparing um, adults. As you would say, you almost call it to pre-qualify for programs within yeah, and yeah, outside yeah, of yeah. Well, um, THD. Yeah, within for now, but we work on the outside part of it because it has to be accepted by the organizations. So this is like giving people a second chance. You didn't quite make it through high school for whatever reason. I mean, you know, there are various reasons why that yes. happens. It might be 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, and it's a look. I think I need to get on with my life. Come do the PATH program. It takes uh, 10 weeks. Um, there are a number of courses, some math, some English, some introduction to the basics of what you teach at the associate degree levels. And once you pass that, you, you, you get entry into, um, into the associate degrees and move on with life. All right, excellent. Yeah. As we speak of um, associate degrees, tell us a little bit about those program offerings uh, at THDI. All right, so, so right now we offer four associate degrees. The, the, the signature one is the culinary arts, that most people do. Um, then there's tourism, there's hospitality, and there's food and beverage operations, or food and beverage management. Um, we need more students to, to participate in the hospitality and tourism and food and beverage. Because everyone is interested, they, they, you know, like everyone wants to be a surgeon in a medical field. Yes. But there are other specialties that are needed. In the, in the case of hospitality, too, everyone wants to be a chef. But there is need for um, tourism people. There's need for hospitality people. There's need for food and beverage management people. Right? Um, so I think if people go to the website, thti.edu.tt, you'll see much more details on what they are and career opportunities. And you'll see the reasons why you should study tourism, why you should study hospitality. Um, studying tourism that not only prepares you for working in the tourism industry, it prepares you for, to manage almost anywhere. And people think, um, if I study tourism or hospitality, I'm limited to working in a hotel. That's not true. Oh, very interesting, yeah. very interesting point that you're bringing <laughs> out there. Because one could have that uh, misunderstanding yes, very because easily. because of the name. Um, is, uh, is associate degrees, are associate degrees the starting point at THDI or are they also certificate uh, programs? There are some certificate, well, we have short courses right. or what we call continuing education. 
And those courses are um, so like enhancement, enhancement, professional development, and, and you can use them um, to get into the associate degrees. So you may not want to study for two years. I just want to be able to cook alone. You can come and learn to cook in five weeks. Right. Or I want to be a tour guide. I want to go to the magistrate school to get my tour guide and license. You come by us, you do the tour guide course. Or we have courses, for example, in tea black production, um, meat production, things like that. So I'll give you a couple. I wrote a couple down for you. Yes, I, I definitely. Suspect you because have these seems like areas with that will So, certainly. for example, <laughs> the art of cakes and quick breads. Right. That's going to start on the 4th of March. Commercial sheep production, 4th of March it starts. Um, building your event team starts on the 9th of March. Event design essentials starts on the 7th. Um, cook commercial goat milk production starts on the 6th of May. But don't limit it to that. Anything that someone wants to do, if a group wants to do something, for example, photography, we can do that. Mm. All right? If you want to do videography, we can do that. It's just that the demands are not high, but anything that any, any group or organization thinks they want a short course and just come talk to us. We have the de design and course development capability. We will find the people with this expertise and you can deliver it for you. And that's a very interesting perspective. What kind of minimum group size or, or, or class size you look at, especially if it's an area that you don't currently offer, yeah. uh, but the group or organization or grouping of persons have an interest? Yeah, to make it viable, eight. Eight, a eight, minimum eight of minimum, eight. Yeah. Excellent, and that's yeah. very manageable. Yeah, and that's about break even. Okay. So within... we, yeah, we wouldn't make any money on it, but at least we'll deliver value. Excellent. Yeah. Um, tell us as well, the basic entry requirements uh, for the associate's degree program. Um, five CSEC or O levels for the, those who are older, maths and English included, um, levels grades one, two or three. If it's lower than that, you'll have to do an entrance examination, a placement examination. All right, excellent. Yeah. So I like the, the natural transition we're seeing. So even if you don't have it initially, you go through the PATH program. Um, in an effort to bring yourself up to speed and, and, and then, then you can enter, now, yes. um, enter into it. Tell us as we move beyond the associate's degree level, uh, tell us about your bachelor's program. Right. So again, with the closure of TTHCI in 2020, um, there was no other institution in the country offering a bachelor's degree. TTHCI offered a bachelor's degree in culinary arts. Um, so the space is empty and we, over a year ago, just over a year ago, we started working on a bachelor's degree. It, after all the research and fact finding, it evolved into a Bachelor of Business Administration degree with specialties in culinary arts, um, hotel and uh, tourism and hospitality, and food and beverage management. So three specialties. So there's a common base and you specialize in three areas. It's going to be done over three semesters. This is after you've had a bachelor day associate degree. You then transition into the bachelor's degree. So it is not yet approved. It, the, the, the development with the curriculum development is completed. Tomorrow morning, it's going to go to our ac academic committee for the first time. I don't expect it to be approved then because there'll be lots of backward and forward and review and so on. And once it's finally approved by the academic committee, it then goes to the board of directors. Assume the board of directors approves it, it then goes to ACTT and to the gate administration, and then it can be offered to the public. So it's still some way to go, but the heavy lifting is complete. All right. Um, and it, it, what it really speaks to is due process um, and the importance of highlighting that process oh, yeah, uh, definitely. for the benefit of persons who will actually want to pursue these programs. Yes. I can't have you on and not chat a little bit about what appears to be I have seen on social media and others, some success stories. Mm -hmm. um, outstanding persons working with international visitors and so on. Yeah. Um, any you want to share with us, uh, some of your outstanding students uh, over the years, uh, really speaking to um, that THDI background, contributing to where they are for today. Okay, so we have some Top class lectures. There is one called Arthur Patrick, who mm -hmm. is a celebrity chef. We have um, a guy called Virtus Lovelace, who whose specialty is Mediterranean cuisine. He was actually head of the Prime Minister's culinary arrangement. Nice. He was also the, the head chef in the Coast Guard. And we have another chef called Sonia Philip, who is trained at Le Cordon Bleu in London. So we have three of the very best you could find. 
and they mentor their students. And I know there's one, I don't know all the students who do celebrity work, but I know there's one come to mind called uh, Daniel Stewart. Yes. Who owns um, Frontline Favors. Yes. Yeah. I, I eat there okay. so often. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> so free advertisement, Frontline Favors. Yes. But yeah, so what the chefs do, when they have these assignments, they'll select their students to work along with them. I think she recently worked with Bruno Boy when he yes. was there. Yeah. Right. And um, international type cuisine with a Tobago flavor. And that's what they do. Our, our associate degrees are actually more heavily loaded than associate degrees elsewhere. So associate degrees typically are 60 credits. Ours tend to be around 90 credits. Hmm. So when our students go for internship, for example, in the sandals chain, when it's finished, I see them come back home for one day. Hey, thank you very much. Things are going good. Pack their clothes and they're gone again. Yeah, they did they, wow. that good. Tell us a little bit about that exposure as part of the program. So mm. it's not just about being here physically in Tobago, but there's usually also the involvement of internship. Oh, work. yes, that's mandatory. You, you will not get the degree unless you've completed the internship. So right now we have students in Dubai and Spain and different places throughout the Caribbean. We're working at some places in Toronto right now and the U.S. Um, they intern anywhere in the world. So, uh, so folks, just in case you're wondering, yes, THDI is that widely connecting. Um, you know, really putting substance to the fact about what's being offered here. Because, you know, very often that's a challenge. We feel yeah. that what's being offered um, at home mm -hmm. isn't necessarily of the same standard or the same quality. So I'm very happy to hear about the details, yeah. even in, in terms of relations, in relation to internships and so on. Yeah. Um, any other information that you would All want right. to share, particularly for persons looking on, um, and wanting to connect with uh, THDI. Okay, so THDI has a um, memorandum of, of understanding with a couple international organizations like Johnson & Wales University in the U.S. in Florida, St. Thomas University, the Business and Hotel Management School in Lucerne, Switzerland, and the Institute of Tourism and Hospitality in Austria. And what those enable is uh, the graduates of THDI with their associate degree to complete their bachelor's degree in those organizations so they get immediate acceptance. Oh, this is excellent. This yeah. is excellent, Dr. Shepard. Mm -hmm. uh, any plans with heading into our schools? I know that the, the THDI falls uh, within the, the remit of the Division of um, Education mm -hmm. as its line division. Right. Um, any plans in terms of connecting with schools as well oh, to we ensure that you, know, you, yeah, you target them from no, very we, early? We are connected with the schools. Excellent. We visit the schools all the time. There are times they come to use our kitchens for practicals. We go to all their career fairs. Um, we involve them in everything that we're doing. Um, yeah, so we, we strongly connect with the schools, and there are some schools like Goodwood, for example, that we have a very strong relationship with Scarborough Sec, Bishops, and a couple of others. But we visit all the schools. We, we are aware of all the, um, the home economics teachers and so on. All right. Yeah. I think a WhatsApp message coming in. You can't let um, Dr. Shepard be there and not talk about student dinners. And tell us about <laughs> that concept that allows persons to come in yeah. and experience the work of your students. Okay, so student dinners are actually part of the academic program. It's, they're part of the international cuisine course. Unfortunately, no student dinners this semester because we only have three students doing international cuisine mm -hmm. and therefore not enough labor to, to effectively do it. But um, the student dinners, they, if you notice, they are themed and it's different countries. So like last year, we had lectures from the Argentinian ambassador or the Spanish ambassador the Nigerian High Commission, who explained the students firsthand what the culinary environment in their respective countries are like. And we had, I think, nine student dinners, and they were from different parts of the world, Canada, USA, Morocco, Argentina, Spain, Brazil, Caribbean, and so on. And so that's basically what the student dinners are. Yes, they are extremely enjoyable, excellent price, but they are part of the academic process. All oh, right, yeah, excellent. Because students are evaluated. In some cases, they are actually examinations. And we want students to get out there and get involved because we look forward to that return. So you've got to ensure yeah. you take up the opportunity to get out and participate in the mm -hmm. classes, um, get involved. Uh, you, you've got no excuse so as to ensure that you acquire the necessary skills that's being offered right here mm -hmm. in Tobago, also yeah. facilitating the international exposure. Final 30 seconds before we close, well, anything else you'd sure, like to share? Sure, there are two other things we're working on. We're working on becoming registered with the National Training Agency so that we can train a, a bit deeper into skills, for example, for people to become professional housekeepers 
is one of the things we're working on. And to do what they call PLAR, or Prior Learning Assessment and Recognition, we're working on that. And I want to put a plug for the customer service training that we're doing on behalf of the Tobago Tourism Agency. So you may have seen or heard that there's this free or no cost to the participant customer service training taking place. So people can um, email customer.service at thti.edu.tt. And I mean anyone, individual or organization, even if you're a nuts vendor, you're selling doubles, you have a roti shop, a parlor, then Charleville or Mason or anywhere, can take part in this. It could be online or face-to-face. -face. Our number to call is 313. 0456 to participate in the customer service program because we really want the Tobago product to be known worldwide for delivering fantastic service, not just nice beaches and so on, or good food, but the service that goes with it must be such that people want to come back. Uh, so important, so yeah. important yeah. that you've mentioned that. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Stephen Shepard, CEO for THDI, joining us on set here this morning, giving a little insight. I'm sure you didn't know all this was happening up at THDI. That's uh, certainly an opportunity for you, uh, some programs, some initiative. And I particularly like the aspect of those short courses that help you to enhance those skills um, in some way, form, or fashion. Rhea, I think I probably got to look at bread making, perhaps, or, or cooking to become that expert. Perhaps not an expert, but just to ensure that I survive from day to day, most importantly. <laughs> Leo, we want to thank you so much for the continued love and support and for choosing the Tobago Updates Morning Show. At this point, we prepare to head on out to a break, and we want to remind you that this is your opportunity to share the live, share the live, share the live.